Bienvenidos, welcome to another episode of Spain on a Fork. As you know, or maybe you don't know, croquettes are a huge deal here in Spain. Like seriously, you go into any tapas bar, any restaurant, heck, you go to your local supermarket and you will find a plethora of different croquettes. Yes, I just used the term plethora. <laughs> Anyways, with that being said today, I'm going to show you how to make what I consider to be one of the most flavorful croquettes that hail from Spain. We're talking a Spanish broccoli and cheese croquette. This is known here in Spain as una croqueta de broccoli queso. And let me tell you, they have the most amazing flavor to them. We're talking a light crispy texture on the outside and a melt in your mouth interior, folks. This is another one of those recipes where less is more and simplicity meets extraordinary. Let's begin by getting our ingredients ready. I'm going to grab a head of fresh broccoli and start cutting off the florets from the stem. And for this recipe, I'm not going to be using the stem. With the technique we're going to cook the broccoli in, it's not going to have enough time to soften up, but by all means don't toss it. You can dice it up and add it over a salad for a beautiful crunch. For the next step, I'm going to transfer the broccoli florets into a strainer and rinse them under some cold running water. And we'll add the broccoli into a salad spinner and spin it completely dry. If you don't have a salad spinner, no big deal. You can use pat them dry with a dishcloth. Then we'll transfer the broccoli back into the cutting board and we'll finely chop it. For this step, you can also use a food processor. For the next ingredients to prepare, I'm going to finely chop two shallots, finely chop four cloves of garlic, and we'll finely shred two cups of cheese, which is 225 grams. The cheese that I'm using is a Spanish Manchego cheese that's been aged for six months. You can use whatever cheese you like here, but try to use one that's been aged as it adds so much more flavor to the croquettes. All right, let's start cooking the filling for the croquettes. I'm going to grab a large fry pan, heat it with a medium heat, and add in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, which is 30 milliliters. After heating the olive oil for about two minutes, I'm going to add in the chopped shallots and the chopped garlic. and start mixing the garlic and shallots around with the olive oil. Very important to mix this continuously, that way the ingredients don't brown too quickly and they all evenly saute. After about one minute and everything's lightly sauteed and the garlic is nice and fragrant, I'm going to add in the chopped broccoli, which by the way at the end ended up being two cups of chopped broccoli, which is 180 grams. And we'll continue to mix this together. And once again, remember to mix this continuously. That way everything evenly sautés. About three minutes after adding the broccoli into the pan and it's lightly sautéed, you don't want to brown it too much. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, which is 15 grams. And we'll continue to mix this. We're going to cook the flour for about two minutes. This is enough time to cook off the flavor in the flour that way it doesn't overpower the croquettes. After about two minutes, I'm going to start slowly adding in one cup of milk, which is 240 milliliters. The milk that I'm using is 2% fat, but you can use whatever milk you like. Once all the milk has been added and we've ended up with a paste-like texture, I'm going to turn off the heat, add in the two cups of shredded cheese, and we'll season everything with sea salt and freshly cracked black pepper. And we'll mix this together until we end up with a thick paste. Then we'll transfer our mixture into a large shallow bowl and we'll cover it with saran wrap and let it sit here at room temperature just for a couple minutes that we can slightly cool off and then add it into the freezer for about 30 minutes. While our mixture's cooling off, let's get the ingredients ready for the outer shell of the croquette. I'm going to add in a quarter cup of all-purpose flour into a bowl, which is 30 grams. Then we'll crack in two eggs into a separate bowl and whisk the eggs together until they're well mixed. And on a third and final bowl, I'm going to add in one cup of breadcrumbs, which is 120 grams. 
We'll season the breadcrumbs with a kiss of sea salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. And we'll mix it together, that way those seasonings are evenly mixed into the breadcrumbs. After leaving our mixture for 30 minutes in the freezer, it should be firm enough where we can start shaping our croquettes and start coating them. Before we do that, let's start heating our oil, that way once we have our croquettes ready, we're ready to fry them up. I'm going to heat a large fry pan with a medium heat. Important to use a medium heat here and nothing higher, otherwise those breadcrumbs are going to brown too quickly and that filling inside is not going to fully melt, giving you that beautiful creamy texture. And I'm going to add in half a cup of sunflower oil, which is 120 milliliters. For this recipe, you can use whatever neutral vegetable oil you like. While the oil is heating, let's start shaping our croquettes. First, I'm going to dust off my hands in some flour, which makes it so much easier to work with the mixture. Then we'll grab a spoonful of the mixture and start shaping it into a croquette. I'm going to use a traditional design here, which is about the size of a large egg. Then we'll add it into the flour. Then the egg wash. And finally, into the breadcrumbs and making sure that at all three stages, you're evenly coating that croquette all around. And we'll continue to do this until all the croquettes are assembled. You should get about 12 from this recipe. Once all the croquettes are ready, let's move back to the fry pan. It's been heating for about 10 minutes, so that oil should be nice and hot. I'm going to start adding the croquettes into the pan, making sure they're all in a single layer and evenly spaced out, so make sure to cook this in batches. With the amount of croquettes that we have, we should get this done in exactly two batches. After about a minute and a half to two minutes, I'm going to start flipping the croquettes to fry the other side. Now every pan heats differently, so make sure to keep an eye on your croquettes, that way you don't burn those breadcrumbs. After a total cooking time of three to four minutes, these croquettes should be perfectly cooked. I'm going to start removing them from the pan and transferring them into a dish with some paper towels. And we'll continue to cook our second batch of croquettes in the exact same method. And check it out, our Spanish broccoli and cheese croquettes are done. Once again, these are known here in Spain as croquetas de broccoli queso. Such a beautiful presentation to them, easy to make, but the beauty of these croquettes is that incredible creamy texture in the inside. Let's give one of them a try and see how it turned out. Seriously, look how beautiful these croquettes turned out. Here we go. This is not fair. Take one. And seriously though, such an amazing flavor to these croquettes. You have that amazing crispy texture on the outside and the inside with that creamy feeling that you smell in your mouth. You saw this very easy to make, simple ingredients, and like I told you at the beginning, in my opinion, this is one of the most flavorsome croquettes that hail from Spain. Give it a try. You're going to absolutely love it. Really quick before I go, a shout out to a couple of my newest patrons, Leslie Tyson, Alan Sanchez, Jay Edwards, Kevin Moran, and Richard Esby. Gang guys, thank you so much for becoming patrons of Spain Out of Work. You know how much I appreciate you. For the rest of you, if you're not with me on Patreon and you'd like to support the show so I can continue to release videos like this, you'll find my Patreon link in the description box below and iCard above. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, leave me a comment below, and if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button. Till the next time, hasta luego.